Actually, uh, we uh, started Pathway uh, working uh, closely with actors in the logistics industry, uh, working to improve global supply chains and global transportation patterns. Logistics is a pretty fascinating area because if you if you look at uh, the importance, of the value, and the scale of the industry, it's about something like ten percent of the world economy. It's uh, oh, wow. so it's really big. It's highly concentrated, and a lot of the value is in international trade, uh, trade that goes uh, on containers, trucks, large vehicles, and. Uh, it's in some sense, uh, from a data processing perspective, uh, when we were starting, this was largely terra incognita. It was uh, a, a rather new world of analyzing this type of data patterns related to uh, to, to logistics assets. Uh, what IoT gives in this uh, setting is the ability to face uh, moving assets, be it containers, trucks, parcels, you name it, end to end. That is, you attach a sensor and you have the whole trace, the whole tag of uh, of an asset that's moving. Uh, and uh, the, this, this leads to uh, an interesting situation in which something like 10% of the world industry has some of its most important data lying in one data schema, one data format, which is essentially a big table of events related to uh, moving assets. That's a table whose uh, columns are something like timestamp, asset ID, location, X, Y, GPS, latitude, longitude, uh, and the type of event that happened, whether it was a, a kind of just a measurement of a location, whether it was a measurement performed by IoT, for example, of temperature, pressure, door opening, some kind of alert. And uh, this this kind of table actually captures a lot of other things in, in, in logistics as well. For example, if, if there's a, a facility where your parcels are being scanned, all such scan events also enter in this type of table. So you have one kind of input Data, uh, data, data table, data schema, uh, which uh, seems to capture everything that's happening, but which is quite unusable from the point of view of uh, business intelligence analytics uh, and and process monitoring and observability used directly, uh, just because uh, it's super hard to query. It's it's hard to express in a language such as SQL a query on the data which would extract what's important. And the important questions are related to a process, things that are happening. So, for example, uh, a, a logistics client may be uh, interested in uh, knowing uh, what are the risks of anomalies of a given type, like shocks happening to your sensitive pharmaceutical shipments in the next two days on a given route, let's say Rotterdam to New York. Um, and if you look at the data inputs, all the information is there. If we've given a lot of man years and a lot of patience, you could probably get it in the end by hand with but it's not uh, all that easy to extract and automate over global processes. So um, the, that's that's where we started. We started working with uh, a, a process of enriching this data automatically, uh, converting the schema to add structure to it in such a way that it's actually possible in real time uh, to get an enriched data schema which is queryable and which reveals information about the process. Uh, the, the, a lot of aspects to it related to, uh, first of all, trajectory mining, uh, understanding how things flow, uh, uncovering automatically the key locations. So this is like automatic geofence detection in the uh, lingo of, uh, of the sector. Uh, it's about uh, understanding uh, anomalies, congestion, delays as they happen or even before they happen and putting into into place uh, predictive models. So there, there are many steps here and uh, already getting all of this done in a batch setting, a setting where you have all the data available, like just historical data, uh, is a challenge to ex express it um, cleanly and to get uh, get an analysis of a uh, of a snapshot, so to speak, of the data, um, and it's it's it 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 gets um, extremely complicated. If you on top of this, uh, you would want to uh, 
manually create logic in such in a way which uh, which would take into account changing data. It becomes a, a task which is both tedious, error prone, requires a lot of duplication of logic between the let's say the offline case and the online case, and so on. So, uh, so our effort was uh, on the one hand to automate this, and on the other hand also to figure out what parts. What models uh, in machine learning, what transformations of data are actually amenable to this type of approach? Basically say, forget what cannot be done, focus on what can be done here and now, and make it possible to make this robust. Um, so the, 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 just, just to give you an example, the types of um, data processing routines that we have, we des we've designed to work robustly across different modes of transport, be it uh, ship, Truck, train, uh, container, or, uh, or, or or vehicle, uh, even working for for small assets like parcels, sometimes with animals, sometimes with uh, public transportation. So basically, to uh, to to have models which work with very little or minimal awareness of uh, what um, what is actually being chased, what type of asset is being chased, to allow changes to this process, to allow new modes of transport to be introduced, to allow changes of, to the logical process. Uh, if, you, if you follow uh, like what your couriers and delivery people are up to before Christmas, it's actually amazing how the whole uh, logistics network adapts. Uh, there are new depots being opened temporary depots, there's uh, changes to the process, things are happening uh, completely differently in peak season. And if you want to make sense of it, you have to have a system which is able to take into account these changes as they happen. New depots open, okay, it's not something that you will you will want to manually introduce, it's something that you have to uh, kind of capture from the data. 